Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nice to see you again. Uh, still with me, Mr. Syahid. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Assalatu wassalamu ala asrafil amdiya iwar musalin. Wa ala alihi wa sabihi rasulillahi ajma'in. Faya ibadallah, ittaqullaha haqqa tukatih, wa la tamutudah illa wa antum muslimun. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, this time, I'm going to talk about the United Kingdom. Sebelumnya kita sudah membahas tema tentang the United States of America sebagai salah satu negara contoh atau sampel dari negara yang berbahasa Inggris atau English speaking countries. Video kali ini adalah bagian dari mata kuliah cross culture understanding yang di mana saya bertugas sebagai dosen luar biasa di UIN Imam Bonjol Padang mengajar mata kuliah cross culture understanding di semester ganjil 2020-2021 di awal-awal perkuliahan mahasiswa menggunakan Google Meet dan juga aplikasi belajar Zoom namun karena terkendala beberapa hal, terkadang mahasiswa berada di kampung, sinyal yang bermasalah, kemudian ada kendala teknis berupa hasil out video yang kurang bersih ketika menggunakan Google Meet, maka solusi alternatifnya adalah saya menggunakan aplikasi Zoom, lalu saya merekam penjelasan ini melalui aplikasi Zoom, menyimpannya, dan kemudian saya share melalui video YouTube. Proses perkuliahan dengan mahasiswa akan dilakukan secara online, yaitu berupa diskusi dan tanya-jawab. Mahasiswa bisa bertanya kepada saya melalui kanal komentar yang ada di bawah video YouTube ini. Jadi bagi Anda, mahasiswa, jika ada pertanyaan tentang topik perkuliahan kita kali ini, yaitu tentang The United Kingdom, Silakan dituliskan pertanyaannya di bagian komentar bawah. Alright, uh, in this video, I'm going to use many different sources, whether it is in the form of a map, pictures, and then I'm going to use several sources from the internet. I have located a few interesting information about the United Kingdom. So I hope that the students can be uh, in very useful and beneficial conditions to learn about the United Kingdom. Now let me share with you the presentation for this classroom. Oh, before I uh, proceed further, uh, jika anda yang mendengar ini bukan bagian dari mahasiswa CCU, boleh silakan subscribe karena saya akan terus update konten-konten yang menarik tentang negara-negara berbahasa Inggris. Dan bisa juga nanti kita akan membahas tentang negara-negara selain negara berbahasa Inggris yang berada di benua Asia, benua Afrika, dan benua Eropa. Oke, okay, I share my presentation. Hmm, Oke, okay, hold on. Here it is. Hmm. I click share. All right. So, focus on country is the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Let me see whether you can see the display. I hope you can see it. Uh, let me make it bigger. So, this is the PowerPoint. Uh, the focus on country is the United Kingdom. Okay. All right. So, the focus on country is the United Kingdom. And you see, this is the picture of the throne, Gambar throne. And this is the flag. And this one is the symbol of the uh, Prime Minister or the United Kingdom. So see, uh, this symbol 
It represents the meaning of the United Kingdom and this is the flag, ini benderanya. Dan ini adalah mahkota yang dikenakan oleh uh, Queen uh, Elizabeth. Uh, and all these symbols are very important for the United Kingdom. Now, let me, let me begin with the, uh, with this video about uh, the next explanation. Where in the world is the United Kingdom? First, we need to see the map, uh, the map of Central Europe. And after that, we will discuss about the British Isles, especially England, Wales, Irish, some people call also Ireland, and Scotland. Okay, let's stop share this PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And now I'd like to show you the picture of Central uh, Europe. Okay, we proceed to this one. See, this is the Central Europe, as you can see. Um, I'd like to make it bigger. Hold on. I zoom it. I hope that you can see it. Okay, so you see, this is the picture of uh, Central Europe. We have here Germany, Poland, Belarus, and we have here Ukraine. Uh, in Bahasa Indonesia, we call it uh, Ukraina, and Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Croatia, Slovenia, Switzerland, Italy, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, and we have here Poland, Netherlands, and we have here Belgium. So it's you, you need to differentiate between Belgium and Bulgaria because they are two different countries located in this Central Europe. And then we move to the to the next side of the Central Europe, especially on the left side of this picture, we have France. So uh, the country is known as France, but the language used in this country is called French. And here we have Spain, and the capital city of Spain is Madrid. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention this country. So this is this. Uh, Czech Republic, uh, I call it Czech, Czech Republic, and the capital city of Czech Republic is Prague. So you can see that, oh, uh, in here we have Denmark with the Copenhagen, and then Sweden, this is a small area, it belongs to Russia, Lithuania, uh, Belarus, and Russia is right over here as well. So now this is the Central Europe, and if you read this, this is the map of the United Kingdom. Um, we, the capital city of the United Kingdom is London. I believe that everyone already knows where London is. So if anyone asks you, where is London? So the answer is London is located in the United Kingdom. And London is the capital city of the United Kingdom. Now I'd like to show you, so this is the Central Europe. I took this picture from Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary, uh, still from the dictionary that I show you in my previous video. Okay, so I stopped this one. Mm, this is about the Central Europe. Now I begin to show you the map of the British Isles. So from the map, United Kingdom is part of the Europe. Um, but somehow uh, there is a topic or social concern that relates to Brexit. Brexit means British access, but we don't know yet for sure whether it is completely happening or just rhetoric going on in the mass media. Now I'd like to stop share this screen.
Now I'd like to show you the map of uh, British. Okay, so I will open the British map. Um, now, as you can see, this is the British Isles. Now, um, British Isles, why do they were called as uh, British Isles? Because in history, United Kingdom consisted of four areas. Uh, they were known as Scotland, Northern Ireland. Uh, this is Irish Republic. I think it, it's not, uh, doesn't belong to the UK. It's Irish Republic, Wales and England. The United Kingdom is actually known as the British. Uh, so this is the way how you call, you read the map, international boundary, national boundary. I'm not going further into details about this one, but I will read you information about the United Kingdom. So it says here, Britain, um, I'd like to make it bigger. I will like to zoom it so that you can read it as well. Okay, hold on. Okay, oh, that's too big. Okay, bit right here, and then we have this one. E. Hmm. Picture to the side. Right, so it says Britain or Great Britain. So this is the way how you pronounce it with this phonetic transcription. Great Britain, Great Britain. So it's not Great Britain, no. The way you pronounce it is Great Britain. Great Britain is a geographical area consisting of England, Scotland, and Wales, but not Ireland, not Ireland. So Ireland uh, doesn't belong to the UK, according to this information. The name Britain is often also incorrectly used to refer to the political state, officially called United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. This is abbreviated to the United Kingdom or the UK. So Britain is different from UK. The British Isles is a group of islands that includes Britain, Ireland, and a number of smaller islands. The Irish Republic, also the Republic of Ireland, formerly Eire, Eire, Eire that's the way how they uh, pr being pronounced, Eire is an independent state occupying the southern part of the island of Ireland. So this is Republic of Ireland. So it's right over here, as you can see in the picture. So this is the Irish Republic. Meanwhile, the area of the Northern Ireland belongs to the UK, right over here. Um, moving on next to refer to the nationality of the people of or Britain or the United Kingdom, you use the adjective British. English describes people from England and should not be used to describe people from Ireland, Scotland, and Wales who are Irish, Scottish, and Wales, respectively. There is further information in the notes at the entries for British and Scottish. Uh, it says that jika kita merujuk kepada nationality atau kebangsaan dari orang-orang yang berada di Britain, Britain Britannia atau di United Kingdom kita bisa menggunakan kata British. Jadi kalau ketika kalian mendengar kata British berarti itu adalah orang-orang yang berasal dari UK atau dari the area Britannia Raya. Kata English menjelaskan orang-orang dari England. So if you say England orang-orangnya berarti English. Kalau mereka dari Wales, berarti mereka dari Welsh. Welsh. Northern Ireland, so orang-orangnya dipanggil Irish. Sementara kalau dia dari Scotland, berarti mereka disebut Scottish. Nah, ini cara penulisannya ya. English, Irish, Scottish, dan Welsh. There is further information in the notes at the entries for British and Scottish. Jadi, 
ada berbeda nuansa antara Scottish dengan English. Jadi kalau kita misalnya orang-orang dari negara Jepang disebut Japanese, kalau dari Scotland disebut Scottish, dari Irlandia disebut Irish. So do not uh, interchange that uh, expression, that word. There are special adjectives and nouns to describe people from some cities. Example, a person from London is a Londoner. Londoner. So the way that's the way how they call themselves Londoner. And so, uh, ini bisa disebut Londoner atau Londoner. So, American tends to pronounce with her. Uh, meanwhile, British they call they cut it. For example, water dengan water. It's a bottle of water. It's a water bottle. Hello, British. They would call it. It's a water bottle. It's a bottle of water. Jadi berbeda ya antara British English dengan American English. From Dublin is a Dubliner. 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 From Glasgow. A Glaswegian, Glaswegian. So, dari Glasgow kita tidak menyebutnya Glasgowian, no. Glaswegian, Glaswegian, Glaswegian. So this is the way actually they pronounce it, Glaswegian. United States glass. Uh, kalau ini beda ya glass. Jadi gloss, Glaswegian, Glaswegian. But American English glass. Glass region from Manchester, a Mancunian. Nah, this is Mancunian. So, titik dua ini berarti dia agak panjang ya intonasi nadanya. Mancunian. And from Liverpool, Liverpoolian. So this is exciting. Liverpoolian. So pot. So you, I was, I pronounced it with the poo just now. It was completely wrong. Actually, it is Liverpoolian. So it has this intonation and stress uh, mark here at this point. So it becomes Liverpudlian. A Londoner who speaks with a local accent is also called a Cockney. <laughs> and Cockney, a uh, Brahmi. So orang-orang yang tinggal dari London, kemudian mereka punya accent London tersendiri, itu dikenal dengan istilah Cockney. Atau Brahmi, Brahmi. Oh, wow, this is very, very exciting. Okay, so this this is the picture of the British Isles, uh, according to this Oxford Advanced English Dictionary. It is simply stated that it shows how uh, United Kingdom has this Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and England. I'd like to show you to the next slide. I stop it for a while here. I show you the next slide, still about the UK. Um, British Isles now. This is the picture of England, especially and focused on England. Wow, this is exciting. So now you see here, this is the Irish Republic with a green color. Um, and this is the Northern Ireland up north of the uh, Ireland. Now in here we have England. So you see, this is the name uh, of the places. We have Belfast and then Fermanagh, Omagh, Cookstown, Derry, uh, Bal Ballymoney. Uh, Ballymena, uh, it's not really that famous in my ear, but Belfast is, is quite well known in the song of the, uh, I think it's uh, an old song, Belfast. Okay, um, now we have here, this is North Yorkshire, Lancashire, and we have here um, Wales. Wales is, is a bit smaller compared to England. According to this, as you can see in this map, England has a larger area compared to Wales. This is the Irish name. Ini adalah uh, laut 
Irish, uh, this is Wales, St. George Channels, um, North Sea. Now, this is the part of the England compared to, uh, it, but if you see in the upper part of this uh, Great Britain or the UK, now this is uh, England, Wales, but Scotland will be, will be in the upper north of this map. Now that is the map of the United Kingdom. I'll stop share here. You have seen now that the United Kingdom has four uh, major areas according to the map. First one is Scotland, and then England, Scotland, England, and we have Northern Ireland and Wales. You cannot simply say that Ireland, no, Ireland uh, stand in stands alone as the uh, Irish Republic, but Northern Ireland belongs to the United Kingdom. There was a history for that, but I'm, I'm not coming any further to that kind of part between Northern Ireland and Irish Republic. Now, let's see, what do we need to talk about after this? Um, now we have, uh, hold on. So this is the Central Europe, the British Isles, so actually this is not Irish, this is Northern Ireland. What about the next one? What should we talk about? We need to talk about this one, government system in the UK. After you know where the United Kingdom is located, now it is time for you to understand what is the UK's government system like? Uh, what makes the UK the UK? I separate information about this point into three. The first one is what is the Commonwealth? Uh, pernah dengar istilah kata the commonwealth? Uh, pasti sudah dengar ya. What is the commonwealth? Commonwealth. How is the legal system in England and Wales? Legal system ini maksudnya sistem peraturan di England and Wales. And I'm going to talk about what does the UK constitution and government look like. Setelah membahas tiga poin ini, nanti kita akan masuk ke poin-poin berikutnya yang membahas tentang sistem sistem social life in the United Kingdom. Okay, I stop share right at this point. Okay, now I'd like to show you the Commonwealth, right? Now I need to show you. Uh, what is Commonwealth? Now, this one. Um, this is the picture of the Commonwealth. In this picture, we have the Queen with leaders of Commonwealth countries. Um, jadi, sistem negara Inggris ini percaya ada King and Queen, King George, and then Queen Elizabeth. Hmm. Well, she she looks like a grandmother to me. <laughs> I'm just joking. That's true. Uh, so you see in this picture, we have the picture of the queen. So the queen is right here, Queen of Elizabeth, and leaders of Commonwealth countries. So the men who stand around here and some women as well. So I think this is from India, Pakistan. They belong to the Commonwealth countries, which mean, what is that? Now let me read you what is the commonwealth nah, sekarang kita baca satu persatu apa itu the commonwealth okay. english is spoken as a first language by over 300 million people and used as a means of communication by many more worldwide one of the historical reasons for this is the spread of british rule during the british empire now, many of the countries which were once part of the empire belong to a voluntary association, the Commonwealth. It is made up of 51 members which are independent states, plus a number of dependencies such as Bermuda, 
the Falkland Islands, Gibraltar, and until 1997, Hong Kong, where Britain is responsible for defense, foreign affairs, and internal security. Hmm. So this is the Commonwealth. Jadi, saya terjemahkan ke dalam bahasa Indonesia, bahasa Inggris digunakan sebagai bahasa pertama oleh lebih dari 300 juta orang dan digunakan sebagai alat komunikasi oleh banyak orang di seluruh dunia, katanya. Salah satu alasan sejarah, bersejarah hal ini terjadi karena um, melebarnya aturan orang Inggris ketika British Empire, yaitu Empire ini bukan kingdom, tapi semacam kerajaan besar, kekuasaan besar dari British Inggris pada waktu itu. Ini, if I'm not mistaken, it was in 1800, yaitu di zaman atau era 1800-an. Sekarang banyak dari negara-negara yang dulunya bagian dari empire uh, bergabung sekarang ke voluntary association. Ini maksudnya perkumpulan secara voluntary, uh, tidak ada paksaan, secara volunteer, ya disebut sebagai commonwealth. Commonwealth ini terdiri dari anggota yang independent, independent states maksudnya negara-negara yang uh, independent, kemudian ada yang masih bergantung seperti Bermuda, Kepulauan Falkland, Gibraltar, dan sampai tahun 1997 Hong Kong bagian dari The Commonwealth. Tapi kemudian ketika Hong Kong menyatakan diri terbebas dari uh, British, uh, dari Commonwealth, maka Hong Kong hampir diklaim uh, sekarang masih ini Hong Kong ingin lepas dari China, China. Um, all members, okay, fungsi dari Commonwealth adalah uh, Britain itu bertanggung jawab atas pertahanan dan keamanan, hubungan uh, diplomatik atau foreign affairs dan keamanan internal masing-masing anggota. All members recognize the British Queen as head of the Commonwealth, and in the 17 countries is also head of state. Members may have their own monarchies or be republics like India. Nah, jadi this is, ini maksudnya adalah semua anggota yang masuk ke dalam the Commonwealth mengenali uh, British Queen sebagai kepala dari Commonwealth. Dan di 17 negara, dia adalah kepala negara, head of state. Anggota-anggota hmm. Commonwealth tersebut bisa memilih monarki mereka sendiri atau menjadi negara republik seperti India. The heads of government of the Commonwealth countries meet every two years to discuss matters of common interest. The aims of the Commonwealth are to combat discrimination, oppression, and inequality, and to promote world peace and operation on trade and development. There are strong cultural and sporting links among members. The Commonwealth Games are held every four years and are open to competitors from all member states. Ini katanya, nah, ini ada gambar-gambar, uh, di sini ya, as you can see, uh, I do not uh, have uh, this pictures copyright, but I use this material as a supporting evidence for, with my explanation. So I do not share fake news or fake information about the UK to my students or to the general public through my YouTube channel. See, so this source is valid. Uh, let me explain to you in Bahasa Indonesia. The heads of government, nah ini heads ini plural ya, jadi kepala-kepala negara dari setiap negara yang masuk ke Commonwealth, ini mereka mengadakan pertemuan setiap dua tahun sekali untuk mendiskusikan hal-hal yang menjadi daya tarik bersama, katanya. Tujuan dari Commonwealth itu untuk melawan diskriminasi, oppression ini tekanan dari para penguasa, um, dan juga inequality, ketidaksetaraan, baik itu dalam hal uh, gender, atau dalam hal perlakuan sosial, atau dari segi perlakuan politik di masing-masing negara Commonwealth, dan juga untuk mempromosikan kedamaian dunia, serta kerjasama dalam hal perdagangan 
dan perkembangan. Pengembangan bisa jadi secara sektoral, secara bisnis, impor, ekspor, nah masing-masing negara Commonwealth. Ada ikatan kuat secara budaya dan uh, sporting links, jadi uh, hubungan olahraga antar masing-masing anggota. Nah, salah satu bentuknya katanya adalah The Commonwealth Games diadakan setiap empat tahun sekali dan uh, terbuka untuk masing-masing uh, competitors dari all member states. Nah, this is interesting. Jadi setiap negara yang menjadi bagian dari Commonwealth mengadakan sporting event seperti ini untuk menyambung uh, hubungan masing-masing negara ya. Uh, jadi tidak hanya berarti mengorganisir sifatnya Commonwealth ini. From my understanding. Oh, this is big and huge, and this is so exciting. Um, um, this is men running, and they're, they're dancing with. I think it's traditional part of. A, I don't know from which country is this, uh, and this one is the stadium. Now we come to the next slide. I would like to show you more about the UK. What is it about? Mm -hmm. Now, after we talk about the Commonwealth, the legal system. Now I come further to the legal system. Um, here is the legal system of English, England and Wales. This is the source, see? The legal system in England and Wales. I read it the English text so that you know how to pronounce it, and then I will translate this text into Bahasa Indonesia. Or I will share with you the point of this text, okay? When the police believe that somebody has committed a crime, they arrest that person and the case is then heard in court and treated as a criminal case. The courts also deal with civil cases where no crime has been committed, such as cases of divorce or disputes over property. Jadi ketika ketika polisi believe ya ini kata believe ini berarti sudah sudah uh, melalui proses interogasi, proses pelacakan bukti-bukti fisik, dokumen, kemudian berdasarkan saksi-saksi yang jujur dan bisa dipercaya bukan saksi yang dibayar ya. Nah, when the police believe that somebody has committed a crime, committed a crime ini maksudnya adalah ketika seseorang telah melakukan tindakan kriminal, mereka di, di they arrest uh, that person, mereka akan menangkap orang tersebut dan kemudian kasusnya dibawa ke pengadilan. Had heard in court. Jadi bawa ke pengadilan. Jadi uh, polisi di UK nggak bisa main gebuk aja, nggak bisa. Atau seperti um, masyarakat lepas nggak bisa. Kita tidak bisa main hakim sendiri karena setiap orang berhak untuk membela diri di depan hukum kalau dia tidak melakukan kesalahan. And treated as a criminal case. Nah, jadi setelah dibawa ke pengadilan dan diperlakukan sebagai kasus kriminal. Pengadilan atau sidang juga ber, berkaitan dengan kasus-kasus sipil di mana tidak ada kriminal yang dilakukan seperti kasus perceraian atau kasus pertentangan berkaitan dengan uh, barang kepemilikan, ya, properti misalnya um, apa, masalah keluarga, tanah, rumah itu biasanya juga di persidangan court. Hmm, apakah berbeda dengan Indonesia? Uh, that's uh, tidak terlalu berbeda, I guess. Magistrates. Now, this is magistrates. Uh, I will remove from here, from this part first. Magistrates. What are magistrates? Less serious criminal and civil cases are dealt with in the magistrates court, where there is no jury, but case is usually heard by two or three magistrates. Most magistrates, also known as justices of the peace, work part-time and are not paid. They are given some training but do not need legal qualification. Clerk of the court advises them on the law. When they have heard a case, the magistrates reach a verdict and where necessary decide what the punishment should be. Jadi magis, magis, 
karakter magistrates ini magistrates ini berkaitan dengan tindakan kriminal atau kasus sipil yang tidak begitu serius less serious ya jadi kalau kurang begitu serius misalnya level antara tetangga atau tingkat RT itu tidak terlalu signifikan maka diselesaikan di pengadilan magistrates ini tidak ada juri tapi yang ada adalah Justice of the Peace ini Justice of the Peace ini dia bekerja paruh waktu dan juga tidak dibayar sementara clerk of court nah ini ini magistrates court kalau clerk of court ini yang mencatat hmm, advises them on the law uh, jadi magistrates menyampaikan verdict kesimpulan secara hukumnya apa hukuman yang pantas diberikan terhadap kasus kriminal atau kasus sipil yang tidak terlalu berat ini. Magistrates also decide what should happen to somebody between the time they are arrested and the time when the case is heard in court. They may grant bail, allow the person to be free until the trial if a sum of money is paid, or remand her or him in custody keep the person in prison until the trial jadi ternyata jeda antara keputusan magis magistrat sini uh, dengan penangkapan seseorang ternyata ada dua treatment mereka memberikan grand bail ini maksudnya adalah orang yang melakukan tindakan kriminal tersebut boleh bebas uh, dalam masa uji coba trial tapi dia bayar denda ini maksudnya denda sum of money biasanya dendanya cukup besar atau remain her or him in custody atau tetap berada di dalam custody ini ketika orang tersebut uh, di penjara uh, until the trial sampai uh, ada keputusan verdict dari magistrate nah sekarang kita lihat who is this man so This man is known as a judge. A judge means hakim in Bahasa Indonesia. Judges. So this is plural, a countable noun. Judge, judges. More serious cases are heard by judges in the Crown Court for criminal cases or the County Court for civil cases. In civil cases and in cases where the defendant has pleaded guilty, the judge sits alone without a jury and after hearing the case makes a decision or judgment. Nah, jadi tugas hakim di pengadilan Inggris atau United Kingdom ini berkaitan dengan more serious cases, yaitu kasus-kasus yang bersifat serius. Nah, jadi judges ini berada di Crown Court Crown Court ini untuk kasus-kasus um, kriminal, kemudian County Court ini untuk menyelesaikan masalah kasus-kasus sipil masyarakat. Ya. Nah, dalam kasus-kasus sipil dan in cases dalam kasus-kasus tertentu di mana uh, defendant defendant ini uh, hakim uh, pembela, jaksa pembela has pleaded guilty uh, sudah menyampaikan apa? Uh, Pleaded guilty-nya maksudnya pembelaannya. Uh, hakim, hakim ini, a judge, who sits alone, akan duduk dia sendiri, uh, kemudian tanpa seorang juri, setelah mendengarkan kasus tersebut dari kedua belah pihak, dan membuat sebuah keputusan yang disebut judgment, keputusan hakim. Jadi, hakim ini adalah orang yang memiliki integrasi yang tinggi, karena di tangannya lah, keputusan uh, dari persoalan uh, dibuat. Keputusan yang adil dan menyeluruh serta objektif. Jadi bukan keputusan kalau hakimnya dikasih uang, berarti hakim apa namanya itu? Hakim murah ya. <laughs> Oke, kita jangan pernah bertemu dengan hakim seperti itu ya di Indonesia. Jangan pernah. If the person accused of a crime pleads not guilty, he or she is tried before a jury. When the evidence has been heard, the judge goes over the facts of the case, the summing up and explains the law to the to the what? Uh, to the jury. If they find the accused guilty, the judge passes sentence that is decides what the punishment should be. Jadi ujung-ujungnya dari persidangan itu adalah keputusan atau punishment. 
jika seseorang accused of accused of ini tertuduh atau tersangka uh, telah uh, berbuat kriminal tapi mengajukan kalau dia tidak bersalah he is uh, tried before jury dia akan di, ditanya sebelum uh, juri ya, sebelum penjurian ketika bukti-bukti telah didengarkan hakim kemudian um, merujuk kepada fakta-fakta dari kasus tersebut yaitu summing up membuat kesimpulan summing up to wrap it up dan menjelaskan the law uh, hukum kepada um, juri ya, jadi hakim menyusul kepada juri if they find the accused guilty jika mereka ditemukan bersalah the judge passes a sentence uh, Um, the judge passes sentence that is decides what the punishment should be dan akan memutuskan apa hukuman yang sebaiknya diberikan ya. nah, ini according to this uh, information about the legal system in England and Wales solicitors are lawyers who do legal business for individuals and companies and also act as advocates representing clients in court nah, ini contohnya solicitors office nah, jadi pengacara jadi solicitors ini adalah istilah pengacara yang melakukan uh, urusan legal resmi baik itu individu atau perusahaan dan juga bertindak sebagai advokat mewakili para klien di court di pengadilan ya itu bahasanya What about barristers? Hold on, my leg is a bit okay. Um, barristers used to be owned to be the only lawyers allowed to appear as advocates in the higher courts. Nah, this is barrister. Barrister. So. I think he wears a traditional hair. Look at this picture. Barristers used to be the only lawyers appear to uh, to appear as advocates in high courts. One advocate, the counsel for the prosecution, tries to prove in court that the accused committed a crime. The advocate representing the defendant, the counsel for the defense, tries to show that he or she is innocent. They call witnesses and question them about the facts of the case. Okay, now let's see. This is very exciting to really understand about this one. Jadi ada istilah baristers. Baristers ini digunakan hanya to be the only lawyers, yaitu satu-satunya pengacara yang muncul sebagai advokat di pengadilan tinggi. Satu advokat dikenal counsel for the prosecution sebagai prosekusi, kemudian satu lagi yang mewakili dari defendant yaitu orang yang tertuduh melakukan tindak kriminal itu disebut the counsel for the defense. Jadi ada dua counsel for the prosecution itu yang mewakili dari penuntut umum penuntut, sementara counsel for the defense yaitu yang dibela di hakim. They call witnesses, mereka akan memanggil saksi-saksi uh, and question them about the facts of the case dan mempertanyakan tentang fakta-fakta dari kasus yang dibahas di pengadilan tersebut. Okay, this is the legal system in the UK. Coba sekarang uh, kalian lihat apakah perbedaannya dengan uh, legal system yang ada di negara kita di Indonesia. Ayo, boleh silakan nanti dijelaskan di bagian komentar di bawah ini. The jury. Sekarang kita lihat jury. So this is the judge. Yeah. What about the jury? The jury in England and Wales is made up of 12 ordinary people aged between 18 and 65. When they have heard the evidence and the judge summing up, they retire to a special room to decide whether to return a verdict of guilty or not guilty. If they all agree, they have reached an, a unanimous verdict. If no more than two people disagree, the judge may ask for a majority verdict. If the accused is found guilty, he or she has the right to appeal and ask for the case to be heard by a higher court. Now, in a jury, 
uh, ada uh, judge uh, judge ini jaksa jury uh, hakim di Inggris in Wales it's made up 12 ordinary people ya yeah. jadi hmm this is exciting hold on i'd like to see the zoom video <laughs> Um, okay, um, 1865, when they have heard, jadi ketika mereka telah mendengarkan evidence, bukti, dan kemudian uh, hak para jaksa tersebut telah membuat kesimpulan, para juri ini mereka retire, mereka keluar dari ruangan sidang, masuk ke ruangan lainnya untuk menentukan apakah verdict, verdict itu guilty, bersalah, atau tidak bersalah. Uh, if they all agree, jika mereka semua setuju, uh, maka mereka akan sampai ke uh, disebut unanimous verdict. Uh, kalau tidak, maka mereka bisa berada di majority verdict. Majority verdict ini uh, verdict yang diambil berdasarkan suara terbanyak. Kalau yang uh, dianggap itu bersalah ternyata keberatan dengan hasilnya maka dia bisa mengajukan appeal appeal ini kalau bahasa kita sama dengan naik banding uh, bisa lanjut ke uh, a higher court mm -hmm. oke okay. I stop share here stop there mm -hmm. alright so that's uh, the part one of uh, this video about the United Kingdom. I'm going to continue with part two about the UK. So keep following this video. I'm going to start over next one. So click part two about the UK. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.